And of course, the lead story all over the globe is the deadly earthquake in Nepal. It killed around 4,000 people, and the death toll is still rising. But rescuers are still finding survivors. New video shows crews in Kathmandu pulling one out of a destroyed building this morning. He had been trapped for more than 48 hours. CBS News science contributor Michio Kaku is with us. He is a physics professor at the City College of New York. Good morning. Morning. So after 80 years, 80 years of no earthquake, why now? Well, it turns out that scientists can go back 800 years in terms of the earthquake activity, and we find that roughly 80 years, there's a big one. The last one was 81 years ago, and it killed 10,000 people. But unfortunately, people don't listen to scientists. So why every 80 years? Well, it turns out that India and China are colliding. And with the collision of the two created the Himalayan mountains, the buckling effect, and the two are ramming into each other at a known rate, at around two inches per year. That's the rate at which your fingernails grow. <laughs> now, that's not very much, yes. but spread out over a thousand miles and, and propelled by a subcontinent, we're talking about an enormous amount of energy that's regularly plowing into each other. What's your biggest concern following an earthquake of this size in that region? We're going to see a health crisis of unparalleled proportions. We're talking about a million homeless people without sanitation uh, and without medical care, sealed off from the rest of the world. Look at cholera in uh, Puerto Rico. Cholera was a tremendous problem that killed scores of individuals. And so we're talking about homeless people without access to food, uh, shelter, sanitation. It's going to cause a health crisis of unparalleled proportions. I thought you were going to say aftershocks. That we need to be yeah. really worried about aftershocks. That's now. right. And the aftershocks, by the way, could go on not just for a few hours or days, but weeks. And so people don't want to go back into their houses because they're so flimsy. They collapse like a house of cards. Even the aftershocks are collapsing buildings there. We've seen the devastating consequences, but what does it mean when we hear the word shallow quake? Well, it turns out that the uh, actual center of the energy was released, about 10 hydrogen bombs worth, uh, about five miles or so beneath the surface, which is rather shallow. Mm -hmm. If it was much deeper into the Earth, the effect of it would have been minimal. Mm -hmm. But because it was so close to the surface of the Earth, uh, people got the brunt of the shaking. And the city of Kathmandu uh, shifted 10 feet. 10 feet, an entire city was shifted mm -hmm. by the force of this earthquake. Mm -hmm. Avalanches kill people on Mount Everest. Uh, did we have any warning? Can you... You know, sometimes people who are seasoned uh, climbers get over, uh, overconfident. They think they know where the tipping point is. We physicists have studied tipping points. It's extremely difficult to calculate the angle at which mudslides, landslides, and avalanches take there, place. There was a warning even last week, right? Uh, that's right, because of the fact that it's so easy to, to tip over uh, a snow mass so that it becomes an avalanche. And in fact, people get overconfident thinking that they know these things, they're seasoned climbers, but these are unpredictable. All right, Professor Kaku, we thank you for coming in today.